Hey guys, Rogi here from Game Guides, and today I'm going to show you how to get the best performance out of Battlefield 6. Now, usually for these types of videos, I would also include in-game graphic settings and their effect on performance. However, because a lot of Windows settings such as hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, rebar or your driver version have quite a significant impact on the baseline performance of Battlefield 6, I decided to split up these topics into two videos, with today's video covering just how to get the highest overall performance in Battlefield 6, and then next week we're gonna look at in-game graphic settings together with their performance and visual impact. Starting with graphics drivers, there is now a preview driver for AMD graphics cards, which can be downloaded from AMD's website, link is in the description below. And if you scroll down here, you can click on this link right here, which will give you the preview driver for Battlefield 6. From this benchmark, you can see that the new driver performs significantly better, both in terms of the average FPS and 1% lows. Quick note, when it comes to these benchmarks, I performed them on the Manhattan Bridge map, so the Dumbo map, which I actually set up in a custom server with a bunch of bots. Now, of course, this is not representative of a full benchmark suite, but this is essentially the best I can do in as little time as possible, and it's definitely a whole lot more robust than benchmarking in the single-player section of Battlefield 6. On the NVIDIA side, a game-ready driver has already been released, which is driver version 581.42. This driver provides a respectable boost in performance, so for both AMD and Nvidia, my recommendation would be to use the latest game-ready driver for the best performance in Battlefield 6. Moving on to Windows graphics settings, where you can now see results from two systems. The blue system pairs a Ryzen 7 9800X 3D CPU with an RTX 4080, and the red system has an i9-3900K paired with the RX 7900XTX. As always, I am showing you 1% lows and average FPS in the light and darker colors respectively, and for each option you can also see the percentage differences over having this option disabled. Additionally, on the right hand side you can see latency measurements that I have collected using FrameView, so this is just a PC latency measure, but it's a good indication whether or not an option increases or decreases your system latency. By the way, FrameView wasn't able to produce this measure on the red system, so this is why I only show it for the blue system on these graphs. And with that out of the way, let's have a look at the impact of Windows Game Mode. As you can see, the average FPS don't seem to be affected at all when having Game Mode enabled. This is true for both of these systems that I tested. And on the other hand, the 1% lows are a bit all over the place, but I wouldn't overinterpret this too much because they can be quite variable. So whether you have game mode enabled or not comes down to personal preference or if you maybe have other games that you're playing that greatly benefit from this feature. In any case, I didn't see degrade in performance when enabling this feature, so you can safely leave it enabled. As for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, which you can find just below the game mode, or if you look for graphics setting in your start menu and then clicking on advanced graphics settings, you can see that this option has a quite significant positive impact, especially on the blue system. In game, there is actually a small information tile that tells you to enable hardware accelerated GPU scheduling in any case, but as we'll see in just a moment, this is actually not true for all systems. But in case that you are GPU bottlenecked, meaning that your CPU is usually only around 50% usage, um, you can safely enable hardware accelerated GPU scheduling for a nice boost in performance and an even nicer reduction in latency. Now, when we look at a system that is much more CPU bottlenecked as this orange system here, which pairs an i7 7700K with an RTX 3060, we can see that enabling hardware accelerated GPU scheduling in fact significantly decreases performance in Battlefield 6. So if your system is also significantly CPU bottlenecked, that is, your CPU is hovering between 90, maybe 95%, then I would highly recommend against enabling hardware accelerated GPU scheduling for the best performance. On the other hand, the Windows Game Mode once again doesn't seem to have any measurable impact on performance. Moving on to Rebar or Resizable Base Address Register, which is something that you actually have to change in your BIOS. Some motherboards have this very convenient enable or disable rebar directly in the simple overview, whereas on other motherboards it's a bit more complicated. You have to look up how to enable rebar for your specific motherboard. On my Gigabyte motherboard I had to go to Settings, then to I.O. Ports, and then I had to enable the above 4G decoding option in order to enable resizable bar. Also, as of today, the NVIDIA driver doesn't actually whitelist Battlefield 6 as a game that supports rebar, so besides just enabling it in the BIOS, you actually also have to enable it using the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. 
you can download this tool from this GitHub link here. And once downloaded, you can open it up, look for Battlefield 6 and enable Resizable Bar. Now don't worry about the other options, they're no longer important. I actually tried with a bunch of different combinations of options here and all of them gave me the same performance in-game. So is that actually worth it to enable Rebar in Battlefield 6? Well, from my experience, it does actually help ever so slightly with boosting performance, especially and actually surprisingly on my Nvidia system. But I can't blame you if you think that this large effort isn't really worth the small improvement in performance. Finally, on this graph, I'm also showing you my total increase in performance by enabling the Windows game mode, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling and rebar all together. Besides Windows settings, there are also a couple of configuration tweaks that we can do in order to try and improve performance in Battlefield 6. Now, historically, those have been reducing the shadow quality even more and changing shader and so on and so forth. But from my testing, everything additional that you can do to the ProSafe profile file has absolutely no positive impact on performance. However, one setting that you can still not modify in-game, which I find kind of weird, is to disable or enable the weapon depth of field. From this comparison, you can see that this essentially just affects our weapon. It kind of makes it a bit blurry where it's closer to the camera. But I frankly really hate this effect. I think it makes your game stutter a little bit whenever you ADS. And generally speaking, I prefer the cleaner looking game. So in order to disable this effect, you'll have to modify your ProSafe profile file. You can find this file by clicking on Documents, going to Battlefield 6, Settings. Now in case you're on Steam, then you have to click on the Steam folder. Otherwise, if you use the EA app, the files should be right here. And then to open the profsafe underscore profile file with an editor of your choice. Scroll down until you see gstrender.weaponDOF and change this from 1 to 0. Now, besides the options that we find in this file, there are in fact a lot more configuration options that we can modify in Battlefield 6. To try those, enable the development console in-game and then press the tilde key or the key below escape in order to open it. The first that absolutely makes sense is to in fact disable motion blur. Now even if you disable motion blur in the in-game settings, so that is the world and weapon motion blur, there appears to still be a motion blur effect applied to the game, which makes us lose a couple of FPS. So to disable this, we can enter world render dot motion blur enable, followed by a zero, which immediately should boost your performance. On my system, this gave me a roughly 2% boost in the average FPS and an even higher boost in the 1% lows. Since we generally disable motion blur anyways, this effect has no impact on visual quality anyways, and therefore it can safely be disabled. The next command that I found had a significant impact on performance was the world renderer dot light tile cs path enable option. Again, I saw a roughly 2% boost in performance. However, from my understanding, this affects any dynamic lights in the game. So while the previous command didn't have any visual impact, this command has a significant impact on many aspects of the game. So for instance, if you are changing your loadout, then you can barely see your weapon anymore. The firing range looks weird. And again, once you're in game, you can see that any dynamic lights are basically disabled when setting this option to zero. Indoors, this is clearly more pronounced with these dynamic lights simply being off. And in some instances, this can even give you a competitive disadvantage because some of these lights actually cast shadows of the players walking in front of them. And if you disable them, you no longer get this visual cue that somebody is walking through this light. Moreover, disabling this option generally makes the game look very bland and very uniform. And therefore, I personally do not like to disable this option simply because of its large impact on visual quality. However, if you're looking for the highest possible boost in performance, then this is certainly a good option to disable. Finally, the last option that I found that had a positive impact on performance is to disable transparency shadow maps. Visually, I didn't find any spot in game where this degraded quality, while at the same time giving you a couple of FPS more performance. Now, while you could enter each of these options into development console whenever you boot up the game, a much more convenient way is to actually write those values into a user configuration file. To do this, all you need to do is to open the location where the game files are residing in. So for Steam, we want to right click on Battlefield 6, click on Manage, click on Browse Local Files, and here we can add a user config file. Now for this to work, you need to see file extensions. So just to double check, click on View, Show, and make sure that file name extensions is enabled. Then right click anywhere here, click on New, 
text document and call this new document user.cfg. Open the file with any editor of your choice and paste those options that you'd like to modify. Finally, if you want to get rid of your user configuration, simply delete this file. Right, so having set up all our configuration and window settings for the highest possible performance, let's now also talk about a few in-game settings that can significantly affect both performance and latency. For this we go to the Graphics tab and here we click on Advanced. First of all, let's look at frame rate limiter. And a lot of people online actually claim that setting a frame rate limiter to slightly below your generally received frame rate will give you lower input latency, but my testing revealed that pretty much the opposite is the case. With the in game frame rate limiter enabled, I'm getting much lower 1% lows, and latency also increases quite significantly. So, for less latency, definitely do not use the in game FPS limiter. Dynamic resolution scale you likely don't want to use and instead use one of the upscaling techniques. Instead of a frame rate limiter, we usually like to turn to NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency in order to reduce our system latency. Generally, we would expect Reflex to slightly reduce our overall performance by acting like a dynamic FPS limiter and making sure that your GPU and CPU are always in sync and that you don't have a lot of frames piling up in the frame buffer of your GPU. But surprisingly enough, we don't really see this behavior in Battlefield 6. So the average performance is identical across disabled and on, and we also see absolutely no difference in the system latency. Because of that, my suspicion is that the disabled state is in fact enabling reflex low latency and that there is actually no way to disable reflex low latency in Battlefield 6. Moreover, even with a super CPU bound system like with my benchmark system here in orange, I didn't see any latency improvements when switching reflex low latency to on plus boost. So for now my recommendation would be to disable both NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency as well as AMD Empty Lag because over there I was also not able to see reduced latency figures when enabling that feature. Without any anti-aliasing, Battlefield 6 looks extremely pixelated, so we have the option between TAA, DLAA, FSR and XESS native. Clearly, all of these options significantly reduce performance, with TAA having the lowest and XSS the largest impact. However, instead of anti-aliasing, I would recommend to use one of the upscalers in order to sharpen your image and at the same time get a little bit better performance out of Battlefield 6. With DLSS, I'm getting 14% high performance in the Ultra Performance preset, 13% boost in the performance, 10% boost with balanced, and still a respectable 4% in the quality preset. Overall, my recommendation would be to use the balanced preset. This gives a nice 10% boost while making the game look slightly sharper. If you don't have DLSS because you're using an AMD GPU, you can always use FSR. Here we saw a roughly 16% boost in performance both on the Ultra Performance and Performance preset, and 14% both on Balanced and Quality. I personally don't really like this upscaler because it makes the game look very bad, so if you have to use this, then I would highly recommend to stick to the quality preset. Finally, we have XESS, which makes the game look extremely blurry and details are completely lost. It does boost performance by quite a significant margin, however, if you must use this upscaler, then don't go below the quality preset. Frame generation, I would always recommend against using, because this significantly increases system latency. Here you can see that we increase from 15 milliseconds all the way to 25. Whether or not you use the AMD or Nvidia frame gen really doesn't matter, both of them are horrible options and should really be avoided. Finally, there is future frame rendering, which as the text here states, increases input lag, and from my testing this is actually true. We increase input lag from 15 to 18 milliseconds and reduce overall system performance. Because of that, my recommendation is to leave this disabled as well. And with those settings, you should be able to get the highest possible performance out of Battlefield 6. Now in my next video, which if it's already released is going to be on screen right now, I'm going through every graphics setting in Battlefield 6, talk about the visual differences of every setting and the performance impact. Until then, have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.